Good morning everyone, welcome to Secrets of Ashara. So I thought I could start the video off by looking at the cliff breakers. Now these guys are level 55 elite and their drops aren't too bad, I mean they drop um, solid stone and that's always a really good seller on the auction house. These guys also sometimes drop deep rock salt and other interesting stuff. We are also at the first secret, so if you look at the minimap down here you may notice there's a rich thorium vein right down the bottom here. So let's go and explore this area, shall we? See what kind of secret might... Ooh, what's this? It's a gnomish building. In here we've got our gnome friends. And these are accessible by both Alliance and Horde. There's some engineering stuff here. This other guy sells all kinds of cooking stuff here. And if you look through, he also sells bright bauble. Ashara is quite famous for fishing, right? There's some really good fishing here. There's a strange thing that happens here. So the platform disappears when it goes to the bottom. There's no one actually at the top here. So I guess we should move on. So, directly across the water from the engineer's hut, we get this interesting person, Horizon Scout Crewman. And as you can see, they've got a little fire here for cooking their fish, and a nice little bed. And I think this is quite a nice little area, you know. I quite happily live here on the beach, maybe in the summer, you know, when it's warm. You'll find a lot of these ruins and things around this um, area in Ashara. It's always worth checking out the ruins because quite often you'll find that there's little chests and things. So running up from where you were before, you'll see there's um, a strange quest here. Excellent, so we've started the quest. And the que quest was a crew under fire. Be careful. Excellent. Come on, Naga. Excellent. So, I'm just gonna pop my recklessness because I've got it. And I'm just gonna obliterate them. So that was pretty easy. This uh, quest took kind of ages, so I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. But um, yeah, they were just sent a whole bunch of Naga at you. And. So guys, apparently for completing this quest you get an incredibly small amount of XP and that's basically it. So I think you get about 600 experience at level 50. So you get no reward, there's literally no reason to do this quest. It's it's kind of like a broken meme quest. Uh, apparently Blizzard put uh, a load of other stuff into the game related to this quest but they didn't really implement it so... I guess that's kind of cool, of a lamest quest in World of Warcraft. Haha, <laughs> neat. So by the way guys, if you fall into the sea of this area, it's very difficult to get back up, but there is a fairly simple way of doing it. So I'm here on the mini-map, as you can see, just above this rich thorium vein. If you just literally jump a few times here, that's it, you can just jump up. And then just nicely run up back to where we were before, towards the sort of engineering hut. So guys, you may notice there's strange crystal everywhere in Ashara, especially near these giants. And you may wonder, what the heck is this? Well, there's actually a quest to collect some of it. Uh, if you read the quest text, it actually says that all of this crystal is cliff thunder a poop. Okay? You may also see a few people sort of crystallised, so these hungry, hungry beasts are easily eating random things and just pooping out this amazing crystal. If you look on the map down here, you'll notice there are four chests and a little area of water in the middle. Now, these chests are actually pretty decent, but there are level 53 elite dragons and they range from about level 51 to 53. If you're passing through the area, you may want to actually just stop and check to see if there's any chests around. So some of these level 51 actually have a small chance of dropping your edge masters. And 
they obviously go for about two to five thousand gold which is pretty neat but the chances of these dropping is extremely rare I have no idea how well the fact that they're elite how that actually affects the drop rate but I think it increases the drop rate because if you look at where the edge masters are dropping they're mostly dropping in black rock depths and they're mostly dropping off elite dogs and things so I think killing elite mobs will increase your chances of getting them slightly although to be honest maybe I'm a bit obsessed with them <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware you'll notice in the water there's a lot of these pools and things this is a fire fin snapper school so I'm basically gonna put the fishing icon on my bar down here and this will make it much easier for me to fish and then I'm gonna zoom into my character so I've got a nice big bobber to click on awesome this actually speeds up fishing quite a bit and as you guys can see my uh, interface will automatically change to fishing although I'm sure you've got a different interface but I actually like having the seconds counting down Now we come on to the Naga who are absolutely throughout the middle of the land. So all around this crescent here and also in the ruins of Alderaf or whatever. They basically drop money, items and big mouth clams. And these big mouth clams are great because they have about a 1 in 200 chance of dropping a golden pearl. And these golden pearls are used for enchanting and all kinds of things and... They typically sell at the moment for about 45 gold. So, providing you can destroy the Naga fairly efficiently and fairly quickly, this can actually be a great source of revenue. And if you actually look at the enemy's level, they are around the level 50 mark, which is great because they have a chance of dropping the Edge Master Sandguards, which again sell for a huge amount of money. So, these guys are kind of worth farming. And these are actually some of my favourite guys to farm. There's also a huge number of these guys, so you're never going to run out of people to charge into and destroy. So Ashara is unfortunately a uh, complicated mess. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite a cool place, but I don't like the fact that there's stuff everywhere. So, for example, there's um, all kinds of cliffs which you can't even climb up. But it's still quite a cool zone. It kind of feels very incomplete. And I really like the fact there's rich Forian veins here. Ah, here we go, guys. General Fangferra. But anyway, let's uh, beat him up and see if he drops anything. I guess. Okay, so we've got some uh, pants. <laughs> there are um, a few other elites sort of wandering around the place, um, typically around the village. I've seen one or two more, and like I say, they're always worth killing because they've got some very good loot usually. Near the Horde flight path, there's a strange elf. And if you talk to him, he's got a quest which you can complete. And when you do complete it, you get teleported up the mountain here. If you can even call it a mountain. Where you can talk to this chappy. And then you can just take you back again. Now I believe there's some quests uh, associated with this. I, I think in Black Rock Depth there's a blue whelp plane which asks you to come here and talk to this guy. So after the elf teleports you uh, up to the higher area, like you just saw, there's a tower a sort of human tower and it's filled with some interesting elves now to my knowledge these elves don't actually do anything though i could be wrong ashara's kind of a strange place because it kind of feels like blizzard wanted to do a lot with it but they just didn't really have enough time to finish the game they didn't really have enough time to implement things so you've got all kinds of uh strange areas like this one where nothing really seems to happen, to my knowledge. So, you should have pulled your finger out, Blizzard, and got all this stuff done. 
but nevertheless i realized they were on a really time you know tight time constraint and building an mmo is kind of a bit of a nightmare in the sense that there's so much to do <laughs> and you've probably got really uh short amount of time to do it but uh yeah nevertheless it is a nice looking zone at least if you come to this area on the map here you'll notice there's the timber mall hold and i don't think you can actually go inside which is a real shame now you probably remember the timber mall guys from winter spring if it loads up yeah there we go so you can actually become friendly with them by doing quests that are um sort of between winter spring and fellwood and there's sort of a passage which leads between the two and you can kind of get a lot of experience with these guys now again to my knowledge i don't think there's any reason for this area to exist at all i think if you're like not friends with these guys you can kind of hunt them and destroy them if you want to but i don't know it seems a bit mean especially if you can gain reputation with these guys um the only good thing is because all the mobs are sort of friendly around here it uh can be quite good for mining i guess uh you know sort of low risk the timber mall hold look at this darn place it's incredible i've always thought this was one of the coolest areas in the game I also wish that these guys were a playable race because I think they're really neat actually. When Blizzard started developing this game, there were going to be the Naga who were going to be a playable race, but unfortunately they discovered that it was really difficult to put armor on the Naga, so they went with the other races instead. And I've got no idea about these Timberwall guys, but wouldn't it have been awesome if you could have started the game as one of these guys? And this could have been the capital city. Let's talk briefly about the Legacy Camp. So, if you look at the top of the map here, there are three treasure chests. And around these treasure chests, there are some... Well, the Legacy, I suppose, satyrs. They can drop rune cloth. They also drop demonic runes about 10% of the time. And there's also a 9% chance that they'll drop fell cloth. Another cool place to farm Felcloth is in the south of Felwood, especially on the left-hand side of the map along the mountains, um, at the Tower of Eldara. Now, as far as I can tell, the tower doesn't really do anything at all, apart from look like a giant. So, yes, this could have been built by Lard Farquaad, and maybe he was compensating for something. I don't know. As you can see... I'm going to be going into this temple here. You can obviously kill the mobs if you want to, but they're just kind of annoying. I'll tell you what, Murlocs are evil. Let's see if there's anything neat in here. So, there's these giant overgrown lobsters around me outside. A few of these uh, Murlocs in the middle. So, yes. There is a boss here, but he's a friendly guy, and he's part of a quest. As you can see, he's got a bit of a ship attached to his belly. There are um, Thorium veins in the water around this area, but unless you're a druid, or you've got some kind of water walking or something, it's not really worth trying to get this ore. I've been swimming, and I've come across this cave. Now, there are some Son of a Rock these dudes around but they don't really seem to bother me much I'll just show you where I am on the map I am here sort of below the Bay of Storms text and let's have a look through oh what kind of an interesting game is this Zaman a fell beast and who's with him look it's Illidan's brother I don't actually know who he is a but if you recall, I mentioned a quest here, and this is the chappy who starts the quest on this island here. He's a sort of uh, Illidan wannabe, so um, yeah, he's, he's got his nice little... Actually, his dress looks very nice, or his kilt, I should say. And the quests all sort of take you around the area, so I highly recommend this if you want to do some good exploration. I just found a strange whirlpool thing, so... Don't know what it is. 
So I figured I'd uh, try fishing in it. Great, now I can fish in it. So, again, I've got no idea what this is. Maybe it's really cool. Maybe it's just like a visual effect. But I guess we'll see if I uh, catch anything cool. I swear this guy's going to attack me at any minute. <gasps> oh my gosh! What the heck was that? Globe of water? Ah. So no video on a shower would be complete without the Hydraxian water lords. Now, these guys are kind of lame, really. They are the mortal enemies of the Molten Core, which I'm sure if you're level 60, you've probably been to Molten Core. It's the first big raid in the game. Duke Hydraxis will actually give you some stuff which you can douse runes with, which that actually unlocks Ragnaros at the end of the instance, so it's well worth doing these quests. Even though this is in like the most annoying place in the universe, it's kind of a shame there's no armor or anything, or you know anything that you can buy when you reach maximum reputation, which I have with these guys. So uh, again, like everything in Ashara, this kind of feels really incomplete. But never mind. If you want to go and see these guys for yourself, it's the furthest island to the right. Getting here is a real freaking pain. In fact, when these guys were newer, there would often be a mage who would sell you a portal or something. These days have passed. No one really comes here anymore. This is kind of old content, I guess. I'm currently looking at the shore here. And if you go to this area and you're up top, there are bridges which allow you to get to these land masses that you can see near the bottom of the map and there's quite a lot of rich thorium veins. You might see these giant legs, and these are legs. Now, it looks like this used to be a really big statue, which has sort of fallen down. And if you run up there, it looks quite neat, but there's nothing really there. You can see the uh, ruins of it. There's a few Naga, which you can sort of kill up there too. Um, that's pretty much it. So that's some um, Ashara, and it's now being explored. I really hope you enjoyed this video, so let me know if you liked this uh, more casual kind of video, and maybe I'll make a few more like this. Alright, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, have a great day!